welcome back. So in preparation for getting things ready for the next um, attempt to take it into ground effect, what I needed to do now was um, adjust the uh, takeoff trim. So I've gone and put uh, 50 pounds more in the nose, basically moved the weight, uh, 50 pounds of the weight that was underneath the um, left seat there into the nose and got my CG forward. So now the static margin is just over 10% which is where I want it to be you know, once I have these uh, new coolant tanks installed there that I'm waiting on. So I need to sort of do what I did the last time and uh, you know, keep adding um, elevator trim pressure there and see when the nose wants to start sort of popping off there around about 80, sort of 85 knots. So that's what this run is all about. And at the same time, uh, it's a bit of a test as well just to see how things are going to be uh, you know with the telltales here and also with those wheel wells covered just to see uh, you know how the performance is now because note that um, most likely there with the wheel wells covered I've got less drag and so I should actually have better acceleration so as you can see here I got it up to about uh, 80 85 knots there and just sort of maintained the power and the nose didn't feel like it was coming off so I started sort of putting in just a little bit of back pressure on the elevator just to see if it would come off there, see how much it was going to take. So and with the uh, G3X display there you can see what was going on. And so yeah, I brought it up to about 85 knots there. If you're looking at the ground speed there in the bottom left corner, so 90 knots indicated. And I was just adding, if you look at the elevator, I'm just sort of adding a little bit more just to see if I can get the nose just to feel like it's coming off and uh, you know right about there I did have it just came off so um, you can see the elevator is actually more deflected now than it was before and that's understandable because I've got more weight in the nose so basically what it means is I need a little bit more trim than what I had in uh, just to hold that elevator there because I was having to pull the back pressure myself all right, so after parking the aircraft I had a look to see where the elevator trim was set and it was almost at the very stop there uh, so I really wish that I had a little bit more there so what I did was I moved the mounting position because I already had another hole um, which was going to give me a little bit more um, sort of range in it and when I moved it and then I did a stress test to push it all the way to the other end I ended up breaking the spring here uh, it was just cranked on such an angle there uh, when I pushed it all the way um, beyond because you need to be able to override it fully in the opposite direction I ended up breaking it the problem was there that uh, there wasn't anything sort of stopping it from bending right there where the AN3 bolt was going through there with a the washer. And those holes, you know, I drilled those with a drill, which, you know, turns out isn't ideal. So anyway, I've taken this uh, little sample here to a local sheet metal shop here, and they've actually punched a hole in that as just as a trial. So I've ordered some more spring steel on this, and I'm going to get them to punch holes in it rather than me drill holes in it. And they also have a shear so I can get them to cut it rather than me sort of cutting it to the right shape, uh, you know, using the uh, uh, angle grinder like I did last time. So I've created these aluminum blocks like that. And what I'm going to do with those is use them to sort of distribute the load um, as it comes into sort of the max bending there. So instead of it just sort of gearing up on where the holes are, they will flex around those, you know, eighth inch aluminum uh, little blocks there. So I'm still going to have pretty much a similar shape, a little bit wider on that particular piece. So these are the templates that I've created and the little, um, the little holes are where they're, they're going to punch there. And I'm just, as I said, waiting on the uh, spring steel to show up from McMaster. And I'll get them to uh, go and cut those two pieces there and punch the holes. And while that's going on, I also gone created that bottom uh, sort of lip there for the cowling. Uh, the, I think that's working really well, the upper one and the one on the, the uh, cowling vent there. So this is just going to give me more air pulling through the uh, radiator and the intercooler. So hopefully that'll uh, be everything I need in terms of cooling. And finally, if you remember from a couple of videos ago, I did this comparison um, to see how the performance was there up to the thousand foot mark. And so you can see in the bottom run there, that's 61 knots is what I got before when I adjusted the power and if you look at this run you'll see now that I 
have less weight on board because I don't have uh, so much fuel in the main tanks but I think mainly because the wheel wells are covered over and maybe probably it was a little bit cooler you see actually got two more knots here 63 knots at the thousand foot mark so and um, there's a chance here I can still be removing um, another 50 pounds from the passenger seat there when I get the um, the tanks installed so it may get even better performance than that so that's a plus so at least some things are going my way and my new laptop has arrived today so I'll be getting that sorted out and then making videos will be a bit easier so that's my update for this first half of this and again. Yeah.